<laughs> that is so cool. Well, hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm at Lark's RC Field and I'm attending the third annual DLG event. So this is an event put on by Lark's and the Orlando Buzzards. And it's a competition, so they actually have objectives they have to meet in terms of flying. I'm going to have an interview for you in just a little bit with a gentleman by the name of Mike. He knows a lot about what's going on, so he's going to tell us a little bit about the events and about the things that the contestants have to accomplish in order to succeed at these events. It's kind of neat to watch them fly. The launches crack me up because you get all these planes going up in the air all at one time. They really huck them up there, boy, I'll tell you what, they get up there fast. It's kind of cool to watch them though because no power and they'll go up there and fly depending on the event and what's required. They'll go up there and fly for quite a while with no power. And I'll give you a look at the windsock real quick. There's not much going on in terms of wind. I mean, it's a very calm breeze. I'm a little envious actually. It'd be a great day for fixed wing flying up here. Two, one, there they go. So according to Mike, who is participating in this event, there are a series of different things that they have to do. I'm not sure exactly which one this one is, but they have to go up and do escalating amounts of time in the sky. So they have to do a flight for a minute 30 and then two minutes and then 2.30 and so on. So what happens is they launch and then there's someone on the field that stands with them, it looks like, to make sure they meet the criteria. So there's one right there just kind of lofting around, just sailing very slow, right over the top of the participants. It looks like he's coming down. Yep. And then right back up again. Mike mentioned that yesterday. He said that there's a number of flights they have to get in in a certain amount of time. So they have to stay up in the air for a certain period of time and then get the plane back down and up in the air again so they complete the total number of flights inside the window. And it looks to me like that's just what happened. Because that guy caught his plane and immediately got it back up in the air again. Looks like it's coming down. Let's see if he does the quick launch. Nope. On the ground. These things talk about a slim profile. I mean, these planes are skinny. But the big wingspan, I'm sure that helps them spot them in the air. Notice the dihedral there, too, for stability. Although I know they have ailerons. Very graceful. on the ground. <laughs> she just called out four minutes. So it feels like it was about a 10 minute window. I'm not gonna hazard a guess as to what the competition is, but she just called out four minutes. Yeah, these two look like they're coming down. Let's watch this one, he's close. Got it. Well, it's rough to keep track of them on that launch. I mean, they're really moving quick on that launch. But I guess that's the objective, is get it moving. Oh, there's some lift. I 
I can tell you operating the camera, I'm holding it steady and that guy is gaining altitude. So <laughs> he's climbing. I have to keep moving the camera to adjust to his altitude. It's pretty cool considering there's no power. They do seem to coalesce around a point too. It's like once one of them finds a spot or where they think they find a spot or know there's a spot for lift, they, they kind of gather, you know. Twenty seconds. Four, three, two, one. And there's the buzzer. All planes must land in the thirty-second window. She said, <laughs> "They're all coming in from all over the place." Well, that was pretty cool. Neat. All right, this is the sixth heat or sixth round, and she's counting down from 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Look at that, man. <laughs> they just, a whole bunch of them go up at once. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I'm impressed they don't hit each other, especially with so many going up at one time. And they do kind of scatter a little bit. So there's the wind sock. There's a little bit of wind movement, but it's not a lot. I'd say it's a very calm breeze, actually. It'd be a nice day to fly fixed wing, powered stuff. But I'd say it's probably about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Very gentle breeze. So it's not like they're getting a whole lot of wind to help them out up there. So nine minutes left in this round. It looks like one just came down a little early. Oh, back up he goes. So some of them get a pretty good head of steam sometimes too. But they're not blazing fast, they're not racers or anything. But they're, they seem to get moving sometimes. Man, that one really, <laughs> he really had a launch on that. I don't think I got it. That's him way up there. <laughs> yeah, he got every bit of that one. Huh, very different aspect of the hobby, that's for sure. It's the first time I've ever seen this live. It's kind of neat to watch a little bit. Very graceful, very quiet. <laughs> and you know they're tuned. You know, these guys probably spend a lot of time getting these things tuned to fly the way they want them to, I can only imagine. It's one of the best things about radio control. There's always a little something in it for everybody. I thought he was going to catch it, and he ducked away right at the last minute. And now he's climbing again. Yep, he 
spiraling up. way up there. She's called 30 seconds. There's still a handful of them up there. They're kind of scattered though. Now they all should start coming in now. We get a 30 second landing window. <laughs> Neat. Uh oh. There's one out there. Three, two, one. Oh, he didn't get down in time. I wonder what that means. Look how skinny those things are, man. It's like a, it's like a boom and a wing. <laughs> Very skinny. While I was filming, I was kind of making some comments, and Mike heard me, and he came over and introduced himself, and he said, hey, I'm flying in this event. Let me tell you a little bit about it. So he showed me his plane and he started telling me about the event. And I said, hold on, let's put this on film so <laughs> people can understand what's going on because I have no idea. This is all new to me. So Mike, why don't you take it away? Tell us about this event and how the planes work and all of that. Sure, thank you. So we're out here at Larks and uh, we're flying a, a DLG event this weekend. Today, right now, we've been watching what's called All Up. It's a little uh, uh, fundraiser that we kind of do at the be beginning of the first day. We get a lot of people from all over the country actually come into this event. Uh -huh. It's a team selects event. So they're selecting the U.S. team to, to represent the U.S. At the, at the World Championships. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. So um, this is our fundraiser for the team. Mm -hmm. um, they throw the gliders up. They're trying to stay up for about three minutes. Three minutes. Um, and then they come back down. But the last guy down, he gets kicked uh, out. I figured that much yeah. out. I was watching. I figured that out. Last guy down was out. So this is a discus launch glider. Uh -huh. These guys weigh... Oh, under 300 grams. We try to, most of the nice competition ones weigh right around 240, 250 grams. Okay. Um, some of them can get really light. There's a couple guys out there flying sub 200 gram models. But What's the wingspan on those? These are one and a half meters. One and a half meters. No uh, power. No That's, power. All Absolutely. you got is a battery and servos. This okay. is your power. Okay. So, yeah, so the, but they are semi full house. They have uh, ailerons. These act as flaps. Okay. So they can, we have braking, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have our elevator and our rudder. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, mine's kind of kicked off to the side. These things are designed to be, like I said, super light. So these actually use a spring in here. Uh -huh. So that uh, the, the servo is only really pulling against that spring when it's to hold it straight. Got it. And okay. then it lets off and it's what pulls it back to the other side. So these are, there's no push rods in here. It's all. Okay. Um, like a, the jewelry bead that you use to make necklaces or a really taut fishing line. Okay. And um, yeah, but we have a throwing peg on the end. Yeah, so DLG is discus launch glider. If you've never heard it, I know people that I know have never heard it. So they said, what the hell is DLG? I said, discus launch glider. So that's just the me method to get it up in the air, right? That's right. how you launch them. Right, yeah. Well, it used to be called hand launch. It's still mm -hmm. called hand launch. Okay. There used to be a little hole on the bottom of the fuselage here and you used to javelin and throw it. Uh -huh. And then somebody figured out, hey, if I, you know, use a little bit of physics and twirl around and get that discus launch action, you can get launches of exceeding 60 meters. Uh, hmm. Some of the good guys, are th they're throwing them exceedingly high. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously the higher launch that you get, the, the little easier it is to get your task time. Yeah. So, like I said, we were, we're flying an all-up right now, but the task uh, changes in hand launch. So uh, we may have a 10-minute window. So mm -hmm. you uh, a horn starts, and that's the working time that you have to complete several tasks. So um, a common one is big ladder, and that is a, a ladder of, of flights that you must achieve. So you must achieve a one minute flight, then a one minute and 30 second flight, uh, two minute, 2.30, three minutes. So you have uh, five throws to get those times. And uh, as you can kind of understand, it can be uh, a little challenging. Sure. 
Uh, we also have the ever fun poker task, which is a uh, 10 minute window and you have uh, five self nominated times. So uh, you may look around and say, I think this air is really good right now. I'm gonna call a five minute flight. And you throw it and you get four minutes and 45 seconds. You don't get your time. You have to throw again and hopefully you get that five minutes before that 10 minute window expire. Okay. Otherwise you get no points. Huh. So it gets very challenging and there's many different task types that we, that we fly that, that make it very interesting. Hmm. I'm impressed to hear that there's a US national team and that you guys are out here competing. You know, this is part of the rotation to compete for. How does that work? Generally we have a club this uh -huh. time. Uh, it's actually the Orlando uh, Buzzards hosted here at the Larks Field who are, uh, who are hosting the team selection uh, event. And it is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we run these rule, uh, this event a little bit more strict than we would normal rules to emulate the best that we can that our pilots would see when they go overseas and fly, I believe uh, in Romania oh. next year. Wow, so. okay. And we've had actually a number of pilots from the central Florida area here who've done exceedingly well at the, uh, the world championships. We've had a junior, uh, junior world champion come out of central Florida wow. from Graves RC Hobbies. What's really <laughs> impressive about that is there's no wind. Like I fly here all the time and there's always wind. Today there's no wind. So you guys are actually looking, are, are there thermals? Are you hitting thermals? Cause I've yeah. seen them hovering over there and then hovering over there. You know, they're kind of moving around. So it tells me they're seeking something. Yeah, he's 100% correct there. Yeah, so we're, we're looking for anything. We hear bugs. And those are generally <laughs> taken off or they're doing it. You see dragonflies, they're uh. trying to get the little bugs that are taken off. You see birds, they're getting at those dragonflies and the other bugs. And then you see the big hawks or soaring birds. And you know there has to be significant lift. Okay. Um, we're in the latter part of the evening here in Central Florida right now. So um, the thermals are kind of shutting down right now. And it's more of a who has that arm and can get that plane up there. Okay. And... Um, who, who's done a real good prep work and setting up their model to ensure that, you know, they're not moving the sticks a bunch, creating unnecessary drag. So where do these models come from? Because again, I'm kind of mainstream. I fly 3D stuff, jets, you know, helicopters. I right. fly all that. Where, I don't, I know a loft hobby is a big one for gliders. Right. Where else do you get these? And there's, how much do they cost? There's um, many different um, manufacturers out there. This is a more of a, bo a boutique than um, you would normally see like a Horizon hobby or somebody selling like that. Although Horizon did make a wonderful model called the Whippet, which was a hand launch glider. Uh -huh. um, this is a, a Nick Wu Flare model. It's a custom made model. Um, I, I forget the production run. Uh -huh. Another really popular model out here is the Banff. Again, small limited production run. It was um, designed, uh, forget the who exactly designed it, but it's made overseas. Um, again, it's it's a very, I wanna say boutique, but- uh, Are there any good retailers that you'd recommend? Soaring USA. Soaring I, USA. I can't, can't recommend them enough. They're okay. great, um, great guys to talk to. So you get to come out and you talk to people and you find out, you know, what might be interested for you. You can spend a lot of money, like anything, yeah, yeah. or you can you can be relatively cost effective. And always, you know, a lot of people say, pick up a used model. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, um, learning to throw, you might strike that tip against the ground and it's uh, very sad when that happens and you break a model. Yeah. But if you only spend a couple hundred dollars on one and you learn how to repair it, when you spend the, you know, upwards of a thousand dollars on one, you'll have that knowledge to work with the uh, carbon fiber the foam that these are made out of okay. and be able to go and repair it. And that uh, looks like a composite build. So you said carbon and foam, is it both? That's carbon yes. on the outside, foam on the inside, foam core? Most of them are foam core. Uh -huh. um, they, uh, they're they laid up with a uh, very light uh, uni or um, small biased cloth, um, often in like an aluminum mold. And then uh, they're, they're pressed and cured. Um, this one is very interesting. It does have leading edge slats on it, which is why it's one of my, my favorite because it's just different. You don't tend to see that on a, on a sailplane. Um, but there's as many different models as there are people who have ideas on what the perfect airfoil is. Yeah, um, we get that definitely in the, in the fixed, you know, normal powered fixed wing space too. Right. Between gas and warbirds and even 3D planes, right. you know, any iteration of those too. So yeah, makes sense. Well, a large, um, a large advancement has always been the composite materials. Um, the, the less amount of carbon that you can use, the lighter it can be. Uh, obviously a stronger model is gonna be preferred. There's a lot of different factors on, on how these are set up, boom length, uh, obviously CG can make a huge difference. Um, yeah. 
you might fly an aft CG and be able to detect any little bobble because the model will be a little inherently unstable, um, which, you know, most of the power guys don't want. They want a nice, you just let it go. Um, however, when it's windy, we put ballast in here mm -hmm. and we shift that CG a little bit more forward so that, you know, as the air is being more turbulent, it makes it easier to fly. So you're not as concentrating on keeping that model flying uh, so much smoothly as you are trying to look for air. Very cool. Very cool. Sounds to me like you guys are into your hobby just as much as everyone else is into theirs when it comes to the helicopters and, and the fixed wing and 3D. Everyone's always got their, you know, their science. Sounds like you guys have some science in this for sure. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. The, uh, you know, I'm always amazed going to any event, um, be it, you know, um, Joe Nall or going to a big sailplane event um, like the Mid-South, which is held actually at Triple Tree as well. And, uh, you know, everybody is so passionate about the, you know, aviation, model aviation, and it's awesome to always meet uh, cool people who are, who are into the same. All right, very good. Well, thank you again. I appreciate your time and uh, have, have good, good luck in the competition. Are you trying to get into the? Uh, you know, it'd be awesome if I got a chance to go to Romania, but I'm, ha I'm here to have fun, support the fundraising aspect of the team. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big event. We get people from all over the country. So there's guys I haven't got to see in like a year. So, so it gets really big tomorrow? So tomorrow uh, we'll, yeah, day? we'll have actually two combined events going on tomorrow. We'll have just the, it's called the uh, Icebreaker, uh, which is just our spring uh, contest that we have here. But we're also combining it with the Team Select contest. So we'll have, I think, uh, 50 or so pilots. Wow, cool. Well, I'll probably swing in tomorrow too and check it out and see, you know, how, okay. how maybe the structured and the, comp the competitive aspects go. Oh, yeah. The watching um, one of the tasks that we do is um, a quick turnaround task. Uh -huh. Like I was uh, explaining before, we have like a 10 minute window, right? Uh -huh. And um, the quick turnaround task that's very common that a lot of people love watching is called five by two. And you have uh, five flights. Each flight can be as max two minutes in a 10 minute window. So um, at a minute and 58 seconds, these, these guys are flying the model right next to them. And as soon as their timer is like two, they're yanking it out of the air, going into their spin and, and throwing it. And uh, when you watch some of the really competitive pilots that we have here, it's, it's an art form. It's, you know, ballet with RC models, you know? <laughs> so, and uh, we, we have some really exceptionally competitive pilots here um, that are just a, a treat to watch. You know, and that's why another one of the reasons I like to come to these events is you're always constantly learning with, uh, with sailplanes, with any, you know, you're, you can be an excellent thermal reader, but you may need to work on your launch aspect. So you watch and you look at people and how they set up and how they actually go through the motion of launching a glider. You may be really good at launching, but you're coming out here and you can learn um, a better air reading skills. And it's, it's, it's fun and the camaraderie too, so. Absolutely, all right, cool. Thanks again, Mike. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with yeah. us and uh, check out RC Video Reviews. It'll be there a day or two, you know, maybe awesome. Saturday, Sunday. All, all right, right, man. Thanks. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, it was very good. They're gonna go in a second. I'm gonna zoom out so I can catch as many as I can. <laughs> that makes me laugh every time. Hey, I heard power out there. What's up with that? Somebody's got power. Is that a some kind of handicap, maybe? I don't know. Someone had power. A lot of these guys spun around, and they're actually flying on this side of the flight line. So they came way, way over to this side. I guess that's where the good air is. Guys coming in. I heard her say at the start of this event that there's 10 minutes, three flights, no more than three minutes, and I think she said 14 seconds each. And she just called out eight minutes. So I guess seems like they have to fly maybe up to three minutes. I'll tell you what, some of these guys are flying pretty far away, and it's not distance-wise that it's a problem. I mean, they can see the planes, but I'm just saying they get out there. They get out there quite a bit, and um, I mean, they are still line of sight, so that's not a problem. But boy, they sometimes, to, to hunt for those thermals and to get that lift they're looking for, they're out there.
See, that one's powered. All right, these guys are way behind the field and they're way up there. I mean, that, I've got it zoomed out just to give you an idea, but I'm gonna go in and this is a 140 millimeter zoom, just to give you an idea. That's 140 millimeters right there. They're up there. There's another one even farther up there. Look at them, the second one, you see it? This guy. Five, four, three, two, one. There's still a bunch of them way up there too. They get 30 seconds to land. They're all coming in. All right, guys, that wraps up my coverage of the Larks and Buzzards DLG event. This is the third annual event. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now.